Okay, so let's go back to the constant coefficient case where we have a differential equation of the form ay double prime plus by prime plus cy is equal to zero. So constant coefficients and um, a linear second order differential equation. So this case that we're gonna look at today is going to be the repeated roots case. So we already looked at real roots, then we looked at imaginary roots, and then complex roots, and now repeated roots. So we are going to derive the general form of the solution uh, when we get repeated roots. So let's go ahead and work through this real quick, and let's take a look at what causes uh, something to, to become a repeated roots case. So yeah, let's take a look at that. We can just go straight into the characteristic equation now since we're, we are already used to that, and we get this. And if we use the quadratic formula to solve this, we get negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is what our r1 and r2 roots are supposed to be. However, we are going to take a look at the repeated roots case. So in the case that we have repeated roots, we only have a single root. So r1 is equal to r2, which we will just refer to as r. And we see that this happens whenever the discriminant right here is equal to zero. So whenever we have repeated roots, that is whenever b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, because whenever this cancels out, we're left with r1 and r2 is equal to negative b over 2a, and there's no plus or minus, which gives us that second root. So uh, this would be our r, our, our only root. And what we are left with is a solution that looks like c1 e to the rt, which if I substitute in the root, uh, we get c1 e to the negative b over 2a times t. So this would be our solution. And we see that, that although we have a second order difference equation, we only have a single solution. And that does not form a fundamental set of our solution. So we need another solution. We need to add some sort of additional solution that is linearly independent from this guy right here in order to, uh, to be sure that we form a fundamental set. So the hard part is finding what this guy is because we just solved the different equation like we have been and we only got one solution. So how do we find the second solution? Now we already know that if we take any multiple times one of our solutions uh, to our different equation, it is also a solution of the different equation. So for example, I can say that another solution to uh, this different equation up here is just uh, some multiple where a is a constant times our y1. Um, uh, so I can say I can say that this is also a solution right here uh, because it's just a multiple of it. So we want to kind of extend that same idea to find this y2, but instead of using just a, a constant, we can't do that because it won't form a linearly independent solution. Uh, instead, we're just going to let it equal a function. Uh, so let's let's say that we assume that our y2 is going to be of the form uh, of a function, which is we'll call it a function of t um, times our y1, which is also a function of t. So we take this guy right here that we solve for, and we add an unknown function to it uh, as like a coefficient. And then what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate it, throw it back into our differential equation and then solve it and see what happens. So this is a process called reduction of order. Okay, so again, we are looking at the second order constant coefficient linear differential equation, uh, homogeneous also. And we said that it was a repeated roots case. So for that, we know that b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, which, which forces r1 equal r2 equal to just some uh, some r so they're the same so we have repeated roots so what we just showed is that that gave us just one solution which was c1 times e to the r times t well, which we determined was negative b over 2a times t like that so that is our first solution and now what we're going to do is we're going to say okay let's let our second solution be some function v of t times y1. So that's going to be some unknown function v of t 
times e to the negative b over 2a times t. I'm just going to leave off that constant because that can just be absorbed into this unknown function. It doesn't really matter. Um, so this is my second solution. So now let's go ahead and substitute this back into this different equation and solve for v of t. So first I need an expression for y2 prime. Uh, so y2 prime is equal to the derivative of this guy right here. So that'll be v prime of t times e to the negative b over 2a times t. And then we have to do the product rule because these are two functions multiplied together. So minus b over 2a v of t times e to the negative b over 2a times t like this. And then we can also differentiate this again and get our expression for y2 double prime. Uh, so again, we'll have to do the product rule on both of these guys right here. And we get v double prime of t times e to the negative b over 2a times t, and then minus b over 2a times v prime of t times e to the negative b over 2a times t. And now let's work with this term over here. And then we get another minus b over 2a v prime of t times e to the negative b over 2a times t and product rule, which gives us a plus b squared over 4a squared v of t times e to the negative b over 2a times t. Okay, so let's go ahead and take these right here and substitute them back into our differential equation. So we'll get y or a times y2 double prime plus b y2 prime plus c y2 equals zero. Let's go ahead and substitute in for it. So we get a times y2 double prime, which is all this. We notice that this, uh, these same coefficients, same terms. So that'll, uh, we'll take care of that in a little bit. But anyway, uh, v double prime of t e to the negative b over 2a times t. Uh, let's combine those two coefficients right now. So we get minus b over a times v prime of t times e to the negative b over 2a times t. And then we have this last term right here, plus b squared over 4a squared v of t times e to the negative b over 2a times t. Okay, so that's that first one, uh, plus the b times y2 prime, which is v prime of t, e to the negative b over 2a t minus b over 2a times v of t e to the negative b over 2a times t. And then finally, plus c times y2, which is just this guy right here. So v of t e to the negative b over 2a times t. And all that has to equal zero because it is homogeneous. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So the first thing that I want to do is since every term has an e to the negative b over 2 at, and since that is never zero, um, I'm just going to divide by it uh, so we can get something that looks a lot more simpler. And when I divide by it, what I get is it's a times v double prime minus b times v prime plus b squared over 4a times v plus b v prime minus b squared over 2a times v, and then plus c times v is all equal to zero. So this is a second order um, homogeneous constant coefficient linear uh, different equation for v. So now we can use that to actually solve for v. Here um, we get a v double prime minus, uh, let's take the coefficients in front of the v primes, we get minus b minus b uh, times v prime uh, and then we get for then we get yeah b squared over 4a minus b squared over 2a and then plus c all that times v equals zero okay sorry about that guys i'm not really sure what happened my uh, my screen recorder just randomly cut out. So anyway, I rewrote up to the point that we got to. Uh, anyway, let's do a quick recap real quick. Um, so yeah, we started with this equation. Uh, we assumed repeated roots case, so we know that this has to be true because this is what 
uh, causes the repeated roots to happen. And then we found this y1, and we only got one function. And since we only have one function, we have to look for a second function. And so what we did is we assumed y2 was some function v times our y1, uh, which we got that, and we differentiated that twice, plugged it back into our differential equation, and we got up to this point now. So anyway, this clearly cancels. And if we take a look at this right here, we can rewrite this as c minus b squared over 4 times a. And since b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, we know that this also has to equal 0. So this cancels as well. So what we are left with is the following equation a v double prime is equal to zero, which we can easily solve using just straight up integration. Uh, so we get v prime is equal to some constant that we will call w1, and if we integrate again, we get v is equal to some constant w1 times t and plus another constant w2. So this is what we are looking for. This is our unknown function v and that gives us the second solution y2. So y2 is just equal to w1t plus w2 times e to the r times t. And one quick thing that I noticed is that if we were to distribute this exponential part, uh, what we get is w1t times e to the rt plus w2 e to the rt. And we see that this this uh, term right here is just another multiple of our original y1 function. So since this part is not actually linearly independent uh, to our first solution y1, we can just leave this term off because it's like getting absorbed into the arbitrary constant whenever we express our final solution. So really right here, we're just reducing this y2 to only include the terms that are linearly independent from y1. And so when we assemble our final solution, uh, remember we just take linear combinations of our two solutions. So it's gonna look like C1Y1 plus C2Y2. And so we can just throw that all together. And what we get is C1E to the negative B over 2A times T. This was our C1Y1. And then plus C2Y2, which is C2 um, I'm going to absorb this w1 into this constant. It's just an arbitrary constant, so I can do that. Then t e to the negative b over 2a times t. So this right here is the general solution to a repeated roots case. So as long as we have constant coefficients in our differential equation, we will always have a solution like this for uh, a repeated roots case. Uh, we don't have to go through this process of reduction of order every single time because we know that our unknown function v is always going to come out to be t. So what we can do is jump straight from our y1 solution that we easily determine and just throw t on it and then put that as our second uh, solution and go straight here. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.